Howdy folks, Jake here with the Banjo Ben General Store again. And this week, instead of a tech tip, I have kind of uh, more of a gear tip. We're gonna talk about flat picks and more specifically, uh, beveling the edge of a flat pick, which is of utmost importance to myself. And I know many others who play with a flat pick. Uh, so what is beveling? Let's look at some of our high-end factory picks right off the bat. This is a blue chip here. You'll see when I uh, tilt that edge, how the light breaks there, that edge is, is broken off at an angle. And it's like that on all corners on both sides. And um, this particular one, as is all that I'm gonna show you, is right-handed orientation, which means um, it should be, there we go. It should be, if you hold the pick like so, the angled edge should be on the back side of this edge and on the front side of the bottom edge, okay? Uh, some people, if you play left-handed, you're gonna hold the pick at the opposite angle, which means you want this edge broke on the top and this edge on the bottom. Uh, and there's rare exceptions to that. Some right-handed players, a, a good friend of mine who just passed away not too long ago, Dean Webb of the Dillards, played the mandolin on the Darlin family on the Andy Griffith Show. Um, he held his pick, he was right-handed, but he held it at an upward angle like this, which is unusual. And his picks naturally wore to a left-handed bevel. So first determine what kind of player you are as to which bevel you're gonna need. But anyway, that's beveling. And you'll see it there on the blue chip. Also on the Wigan, you'll see they have a nice bevel. Um, there's another Wigan. The white's a little harder to see, but there you go, it's there. Um, also, uh, here's a Dunlop Ultex, which is a good blue chip substitute. If you don't quite have the money or you don't like carrying a blue chip in your pocket. These don't wear quite as long, but they're a little closer to actual tortoise shell in their tonal properties to me. Um, and then here's here's a piece of tortoise too. You can see the, the wear going on that. So anyway, uh, and here's, here's my personal pocket pick. I've just been carrying a cheap, extra heavy Dunlop Tortex. You can see where I've beveled it and then kind of worn it. But anyway, that's what you want. With that kind of wear, you're gonna get a much smoother uh, attack on the string and you're gonna get more clarity, more fullness in your tone. It's just gonna help everything. So once you've determined what kind of pick, uh, what kind of bevel angle you're gonna need, a right hand or left hand bevel basically, if you're doing this yourself, I'm gonna show you how to do it. Uh, like if you got a piece of tortoise that you need to bevel, uh, of course, if you're working with tortoise, I'd recommend starting with uh, something like this Ultex first because it's similar to tortoise. And it's actually the same as these prime tones, the same material, uh, these Ultex gold colored ones. Uh, but the factory edge is just kind of more square. It's not as nice. So practice with something like this before you go on to tortoise shell, just to make sure you have it down the way you want to do it. Um, but you can do this with any pick. I mean, even a cheap plastic pick, it's going to make it it's gonna improve it to do this. So what we do, we just take a piece of 400 grit sandpaper. Um, this is wet dry sandpaper. And uh, like I said, 400 grit works. You can start with a heavier grit, uh, depending on the material and how, how fast it's gonna remove the material from your pick. Uh, but 400 grit is what I would kind of end up with. And on this particular, if I remember right, I've done these before on this particular type of material, it seems to work okay. So what you wanna do, if you can imagine the edge being square, like let's say if this notebook is our pick edge like this, if it's square, what I wanna do is this, this sharp edge, I wanna remove it at an angle like so. So if you can kinda of visualize that on the pick, you lay it kind of up on its edge uh, you don't want to go too steep, about as flat as you can hold it with your finger, works about right. And what I do, I start pushing in to the sandpaper and I'll rotate it up and kind of in the, the direction the pick follows like that. So I'll push it down, rotate it up. And what we're doing is we're breaking that edge. And you can just do this for a while. And I'll just show you one side basically to save time on the video. Uh, once you do this side, you just flip it over and do the other. So after you do a few, you can see already we're starting to get 
an angle there. You see that? And we want to break it all the way down to the tip. And it doesn't have to be too scientific because once you get uh, that sharp edge off and you get kind of more of that rounded bevel going on, once you start playing with it, just it'll naturally wear into exactly the angle you play with. This is just kind of an initial thing here. So you can see we're, we're breaking that edge off already. So once you kind of get it down where you want it, if it were mine, I'd go a little further. And I'll probably, if it were mine, I'd go a little more than I'm gonna show you in the video. You just kind of work at it, go slow with it. So anyway, once you kind of get it down, looking about like that, where you got the edge broke off, we take just a piece of cardboard. This is just on the back of a notebook paper. Ignore my notes there. And um, we're gonna take this uh, cardboard on the back. You can use any cardboard. And you just push down and do similar motion to what you were doing on the sandpaper there. And that's gonna buff it out to a, a real high polish. Like I said, if this were mine, and I would suggest you doing the same, spend a little more time with it than what I'm showing you in the video. You know, get a little better uh, edge on it and things like that. And polish it a little longer than what I'm showing you. But you can see right there, we've got a real slick edge taking place already. So anyway, I hope that helps. Like I said, this is a technique you can use on, on any pick. And um, you can use it to maintain any pick too. Uh, you can see mine there, I just buffed it and, and made it slicker. Uh, even on the tortoise shell and the, the prime tone style picks, uh, the more you use them, they will wear and get kind of scratchy. And you can take them to the 400 grit sandpaper or sometimes just the cardboard and uh, polish those edges out, smooth them up a little bit. So anyway, I hope that helps. And like always, we appreciate you folks a whole bunch. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.